last week when it came to our attention uh, that uh, the NCOP uh, whips would be in Namibia this week. They are in Namibia, Honorable Dango, uh, who's on the <laughs> picture here, video, uh, I... is, uh, is uh, connected uh, from Namibia, if I'm not mistaken. You managed to go. I unfortunately, Chairperson, could not go because I had a cough and sniffles and they wouldn't allow me on the plane with that. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> so we could have continued during the day. <laughs> so we only have one with, that is not with us, uh, uh, Honorable uh, Um So that was our understanding that you all would be in uh, Namibia. That's correct. Uh, this week, yes. So that's why we, we made changes to the program. Um, I've just been informed by uh, the committee secretary, she's still having some technical problems, <laughs> same problem that she was having last week. Uh, she can hear us, uh, but we can't hear her. Uh, she was telling me that the minister was uh, greeting uh, her, but she the minister couldn't hear when uh, she was responding back. So uh, again, I have a responsibility then of uh, dealing with uh, apologies. She has indicated to me that uh, Honorable uh, Lund has uh, apologized. Uh, he's not going to be part of the meeting. Uh, I have also been uh, conducted by uh, the DG uh, of the department. Uh, due to the load shedding, there's a problem of uh, traffic congestion uh, where he is, but he will uh, be able to join us as soon as uh, he's settled. Uh, he has uh, asked me to convey a message to the COO uh, to continue with the presentation after the minister has uh, uh, made uh, the opening remarks. Um, <clears throat> If, if Honorable Dango, you can perhaps uh, for now switch off. Oh, yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you to switch off your, your video. Um, so the uh, COO should be ready after the uh, minister has uh, made the opening remarks. And in terms of uh, the attendance, we have uh, myself, Mani uh, Lakhai, got uh, Honorable uh, Moshodi. Got Honorable Boshoff, Honorable Mimang, uh, Honorable Dango. Um, go down. Oh, Honorable Tim Brotherson. Uh, oh, I also see that uh, the DG has managed to log in. Uh, yeah. So the apologies that we have, we do have a, a long standing day apologies. Uh, one was a, a motion that was passed uh, to give leave to Honorable Matibula. Uh, she's still on leave. Uh, that was approved by uh, the uh, NCOP plenary session. But also we are aware as a committee that uh, Honorable Lansman has also been uh, on leave. Uh, we understand that uh, he's not well. Uh, he's not been with us. Uh, since the towards the end of last year, uh, yeah. So those are the two uh, long-standing apology and the one for Honorable uh, Lund. Um, as I've welcomed everybody, I will now uh, uh, hand over to uh, the minister for the opening remarks as we are today. Uh, getting a briefing from the Department of uh, Employment and Labor uh, on their 2022-2023 uh, annual performance plans, uh, as well as the budget. Yeah. Over to you, you, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Chair. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, as a member who was saying that <laughs> what frustrated her with the virtual <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
the platform is where the person asks that question <laughs> whether he or she is affordable. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Minister. Thank you, Honorable Chair and the members of the committee. Our Deputy Minister, the, the DG and the officials of the department there. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for this opportunity for the department to present uh, the strategic plan and our APP to the committee. And uh, I always say, honorable chair and members, we value input and affirm our commitment to the principle of parliamentary oversight of the executive of the ministers and officials, even if sometimes it's uncomfortable, but it's done. Recording in progress. To make us on our toes. And uh, in order to be able to, to be responsive to the needs of the people, the officials of the department, of course, led by the DG will provide a detailed presentation, but I would like to briefly flag the following. At, at, at this meeting, or as this meeting takes place under the National Council of Provinces, so I want to stress the department truly national footprint across every province with uh, nine, nine provincial offices, 125 labor centers, 30 satellite offices, 41 to song uh, service centers, and uh, 447 visiting points. That's, that's, that's our national uh, footprint. In relation to priority two, the economic transformation and job creation, you, you will note the new indicators in the strategic plan with emphasis very much on the job preservation and creation, particularly in relation to the youth. But in no way, in, in no way compromising on the department's traditional role to promote decent work and inspect and enforce legislation and basic and minimum conditions of employment, the health and safety and employment equity, as well as providing social protection to employees uh, through the UIF and the compensation fund. In relation to the APP, I want to flag the following. As regards program two, inspection and enforcement services, note the <clears throat> increase in the size of the inspectorate and the significant rise in the targeted inspections for this year. Of course, it's still not enough. You will also note a renewed commitment to providing jobs to people with disabilities by gradually <clears throat> expanding the supported employment enterprises where we have not been doing very well. And uh, I thought that I must just highlight those. But I want to pause there, Chairperson, and say the comprehensive and the granular detail will be provided by the officials and and thank you very much for that so that we waste more time on the actual presentations than just the opening remarks thank you chapese uh, thank you so much uh, honorable minister uh, dg now that you are back i'll hand over to you so you can then uh, delegate yourself if you want to do so thank you very much uh, chairperson and good evening chairperson uh, Honorable Minister and the Honorable uh, Members uh, of the Committee. Chair, I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Marsha Blomkos to run uh, with the presentation whilst I'm still catching my breath. Um, we have no chair in this site. Thanks, Chair. Over to you, COO. Thank you, Chairperson, and good evening to you and all the other members. Um, I'm going to ask Matapelo to share the screen with us. And whilst she's doing that, just give a few comments in terms of introduction. 
I have prepared the presentation. We've circulated it. And with your approval, I'm not going to go into each and every detailed sentence in the presentation. In terms of the table of contents, firstly is the introduction. There we reflect a little bit on our mandate. We reflect a little bit on our values uh, and, and so forth. And then we move from there to the Department of Employment and Labor's programs and entities. Uh, our focus in the medium term strategic framework so that I want to tie everything together in that part of the presentation. The strategic plan. And then finally, look at the annual performance plan, focusing a little bit on the work that will be done by provinces specifically. The first slide that I would like to talk about is slide nine, which can, can is. Can I give you, sorry, so can I give you one yes, hour? Yes. Is that sure. enough? More All than right. enough. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you. Is slide nine. And this is just a gain for us to refresh ourselves in terms of the programs and the entities of the department. Clearly, program one is administration, and we find the ministry, the deputy ministry, the director general's office, corporate services, the COO's office, and the chief financial officer in program one. Then program two, coming closer to the bone, is the meet of inspection and enforcement services as well as public employment services. And then our policy development arm program four is labor market policy and industrial relations. The unemployment insurance fund and the compensation fund takes care of our social security matters. And these are schedule 3A public entities also resorting under the minister of labor and the director general. On slide number 10, I reflect on the entities uh, and uh, uh, entities of the department, and clearly there everyone is aware of the CCMA, that is one of our entities, as well as NetLAC. We also have Productivity South Africa as an entity, and then supported employment enterprises, these four entities in terms of the department. On slide 11, there's a, a reflection on what the minister has already referred to in his introduction. And I want to just talk about the 447 visiting points. Uh, this is important because these points are scattered throughout the country. And these are points that are serviced on an interval by our officials. Some of them are serviced once a month. Some of them are serviced every two weeks. Some of them are serviced weekly. And some of them are even serviced twice a week or sometimes even more, depending on the need for the services there. So uh, apart from the labor centers, the satellite office to some centers, there are 447 visiting points, which are mostly in the very deep rural areas of the, the country and of the department. I would like to now reflect on the strategic plan and the outcomes and outcome indicators which are applicable to the mandate of the Department of Employment and Labor. On slide 13, we reflect that we will focus on six of the seven priorities. The one priority that does not have a direct impact on the department is priority five. Uh, that is the district development model. We do support it, though, through our provincial offices and labor centers, but it's not a direct, uh, directly linked to the mandate of the department. So priority one, I think every government department has this capable ethical developmental state. Priority two, economic transformation and job creation, which is a very important priority for this department. Priority three is education, skills and health. Priority four is consolidating the social wage through reliable and basic services. Priority six is social cohesion, safer communities. And then, of course, priority seven, better Africa and a better world. On slide 14, I have made an, uh, a reflection on which of our programs or branches or public entities support which priority so that we can start to get a sense of who's responsible for what in the department. Now, in terms of priority one, a capable and ethical and developmental state. This is the whole Department of Employment and Labor, as well as all our public entities, and by implication, administration program. Priority two, economic transformation and job creation. Here it is inspection and enforcement services, public employment services, labor policy, industrial relations, 
supported employment enterprises, the UIF, the Compensation Fund, and the other three entities of the department. Priority three, education, skills, and health. Again, uh, inspection and enforcement services, public employment services, the two funds, and then Productivity South Africa. In terms of priority four, consolidating the social wage through reliable and basic services. Here it's inspection enforcement services and the two funds. Priority six, social cohesion and safer communities, as well as priority seven, a better Africa and a better world are, are supported by the program four, LP and IR. So what is the impact statement of the Department of Employment and Labor? It is a labor market which is conducive to decent employment. Jay, then from here going forward, I'm reflecting a little bit on the, multi, uh, on the MTSF and where we have linked our income indicators. So the ones in red are new ones which we have uh, compiled for this two, three years going forward. And if with your approval, I'll focus on the changes only so that we again have ample time for discussion. Our vacancy rate, we would want to maintain that at 8%. You will see that has changed to 8%. Then uh, outcome indicated, improve information security status of the department. We have here planned a three-year cybersecurity roadmap to make sure that we can improve our information security. And then 3.2, the legacy systems are transitioned to modern integrated, to a modern integrated SAP for HANA uh, platform. And this is currently being rolled out in the department. If we look at slide number 17, nothing has changed here as the previous years in terms of the numbers. The job summit agreement initiatives has got the 275,000 jobs that are created by per year, and this is where we monitor and report on. And then the number of jobs created through the presidential comprehensives, youth employment interventions, and the number of youth need absorbed in employment. These are all part of the MTSF indicators. We we know that by 2024 we would have want we would want to create 1 million youth jobs, of which the department will contribute 256,000. Unpacked in terms of public employment services, 190,000. The supported employment enterprises and the designated groups, 1,000. The UIF through its labor activation programs, 61,050. And the compensation fund through its programs, 4,000. Then another new indicator is the development of the employment policy, and I'm and the members are busy, hard busy with that at the moment. We're busy with the public hearings as well to make sure that we can develop this employment policy. On slide 18, we have the five-year target for employment equity inspections, and here we will see that we have a target for the five years of 18,420 workplaces that will be inspected and transformed. And inclusive, this is 1,812 DG reviews. Now, you will recall that a DG review is a much more detailed inspection than the normal run-of-the-mill employment equity inspection. In terms of our inspections of workplaces, our inspectors will visit just under 840,000 workplaces over the next five years to make sure that there is compliance to labor legislation. If we move to the next slide, this is the inspections in terms of occupational health and safety. And when Minister alluded to the additional inspectors that, uh, that we have in the department, he was also alluding to the 500 occupational health and safety inspectors that we have recruited and appointed. So in year one, we would do 23,844, but exponentially increase them up to 421,620. And this will include the del delivery of inspections by these additional inspectors that we have. If we move to slide number 20, 
This is the comprehensive, comprehensive social security coverage. We would like to cover employees uh, by increasing the compliance of 131, 580 employers to the UIF Act and the Compensation uh, Coid Act to make sure that there is increased compliance and increased coverage for workers. Priority number six, which is on slide 21. <clears throat> we are busy, as you know, with the Employment Equity Act amendments and to enforce this, just slide 21, please, Matapelo. Thank you. Employment Equity Act amended and enacted by 2024. And then at least 50% of our middle and senior managers in the country must be African by the, by the end of 2021. We would also like to set sector targets to achieve at least 2.5% of employed adults to be people with disabilities. This is on slide 22. Uh, thank you. And then also the income differential data collection tool that should be designed and developed by the end of financial year 2022. Chairperson, then we move to slide 23, a better Africa, a better South Africa. And here our focus is on fulfilling our obligations, our international obligations, and our participation in international organizations to advance our national interests. And I think the upcoming Child Labor Conference is one of those big events where we would like to showcase what we do indeed in South Africa and in Africa. So can we now look a little bit more in detail if we move to slide 24 to the annual performance plan for 22-23. And on 20, slide 25, I'm giving assurance that the APP was subjected to auditing by the Auditor General as well as our internal audit for alignment to the government priorities, for alignment to the MTSF, the Minister's Performance Agreement, alignment to our STRAT plan, as well as the guidelines provided by DPME and National Treasury. We also have compliance to the SMART principle of indicators, and we have aligned the budgets to the outputs. In terms of slide 26, again, I reflect on the different programs, and I'm going to look at detail what is expected of each of these programs in the financial year ahead. Slide 27, Program 1, Administration. The purpose there is to provide strategic leadership, management, and support services to the department. On slide 28, we can see that the budget allocation there is a substantial amount. And this amount is uh, big because all the ICT procurement and uh, ICT expenses are defrayed against this budget. I have alluded earlier when I spoke about the strat plan changes that we would want to have uh, maintain our funded vacancies at 8% or less for every quarter. And by the end of this financial year, we would want to have 45% of the SMS positions occupied by women. So we're incrementally going to increase it from 45% to 50% at the end of the strategic plan's life cycle. You will recall when I discussed the MTSF and the strat plan, this was a new indicator, 3.1, the security status of the department. So the target here is to appoint a managed information security service provider and to do a security environment assessment reports to implement the key controls and to approve our cybersecurity strategies and roadmaps. Members will recall that this was a finding that we've had for uh, some time now from the Auditor General during our cyber security audits. So we're using this to address that finding and to make sure that we, we are cyber safe. On slide 29, I'm still continuing with administration. Our legacy systems, as I also alluded to earlier, is to replace the IES and the PEST systems with SAP for HANA and to make sure that they are ready and live by the end of quarter four. This is a substantial task because there's a lot of development work that has to be done. 
Then the functionality of our ethics structure and adequate capacity, this uh, capacity, this is a plan that we still have and to roll out all of this in terms of the activities that have been planned for this financial year. Our percentage resolution of corruption and reported incidents, 93% resolution to be reported by disciplinary and criminal interventions. There will always be a little bit that run over <clears throat> excuse me, because of the nature of the investigations that have to take place. Some of them are very complex and might not be finalized within the timeframes of this financial year. I'm still continuing with administration. On slide 30 is the number of financial statements that have to be finalized and the deadlines are there. And I just want to stop a moment there. People are asking us, why do you put things which appear to be operational? like the financial statements, the irregular, unauthorized expenditure, fruitless and wasteful in your annual performance plan and not in your operational plan. It is because of the importance that we have that we want to um, put this in here to make sure that we comply to the prescripts of the PFMA and make sure that we, we take care of our uh, irregular fruitless, wasteful, and so forth expenditure, and to make sure that we comply in terms of the financial statements. As with any entity, we have risks in this program, and the risks that we have are the inability to modernize our programs to meet our objectives, our structural deficiencies or inadequate organizational structures to service the needs of the department, and then an increase in the vacancy rate and the risk mitigation strategies are to the right thereof. Chairperson, that brings me to program number two. And before I go to program number two, I just want to say that program one is cross-cutting for every manager, every program in the department. It is cross-cutting for every province. So you will not get provincial specific information because all of, all of us have to uh, manage these indicators in terms of program one. Program two, inspection and enforcement services. The purpose here is to realize decent work by regulating non-employment and employment conditions through inspection and enforcement to achieve compliance with all labor market policies. On slide 33, you will see that the budget allocation is just over 657 million rand to this program. And the annual target is 298,104 inspections that have to be conducted by the inspectors of the department. It's a cumulative total. So in quarter one, we expect a delivery of 74,526. By the end of quarter two, the total between quarter one and quarter two must be 149,052 and so forth. Then the percentage of non-compliant employers of those inspected served with a notice, 95% will be served with a notice within 14 calendar days of the inspection. There has been a small change to indicator 1.3. The percentage of non-compliant employers, workplaces and users received by statutory services settled out of court or CCMA referred for prosecution will be 65% within 30 working days. And then we would also like to do some formal advocacy to inform our stakeholders of their duties and rights in terms of the law. And there we would have four seminars and two big conferences to be held. I think with the COVID pandemic behind us, especially the conferences will be possible to be conducted. Chairperson, on slide 34, I give the breakdown of the provincial inspections, the number of inspections expected per province. Again, as I said earlier, it's resource-based. So Eastern Cape, we expect them to deliver on 31,884 inspections. Free State, we expect them to deliver 26,628. Gauteng, 61,236. KZN 63,720. In Limpopo, we expect 27,780 inspections. Kumalanga, 21,528. 
Northern Cape, clearly the smallest province in terms of population density, 12,636. Northwest, 19,680. Western Cape, 32,724. And then we also have specialist inspectors in head office, and we expect them to deliver on 288 inspections, bringing us to the total of 298,104. Slide 35 gives a breakdown of what inspections will be done in terms of legislation, employment equity, BCEA inspections, occupational health and safety, uh, employer audit services for the UIF, and then COIT inspections. Uh, Chair, for the sake of time, I'm not going to work through them one by one. Um, we'll take questions, I'm sure, when when I'm done. There are also risks in this program, which we feel might impact on our work. The firstly is the non-compliance by employers and users uh, with labor legislation. And the second key risk is unreliable performance information. I think members will recall that we've had uh, some adverse findings in the last couple of years around the performance information for IES. And I know that the branches worked very hard to take care of, of, of those findings. Public employment services. The purpose of public employment services is to assist companies and workers to adjust to changing labor market conditions. On slide 38, we see that their budget allocation is 630 and a half million rand. The number of work seekers that will be registered on the employment services system of South Africa will be 850,000 for this financial year, at least. The number of employment opportunities that will be registered on the same will be 105,000. We would aim to provide 240,000 employment count, uh, sorry, work seekers with employment counseling, and then fill 55,000 vacancies with registered work seekers. There is a further indicator here, and that is the number of partnerships agreed, uh, agreements concluded would be 22, and then the number of policies developed and approved would be one, and this is uh, the policy that is currently out for public comment. On slide 40, I give a, please, uh, a reflection again on the work that must be delivered by the provinces, each individual province. And uh, this is the number of work seekers to be registered. And the numbers are there on the left in terms of the annual target. I would just want to again clarify that this is also a cumulative target. And that by the end of quarter four, 102,000, for example, in Eastern Cape must have been uh, registered on the system. Slide 41 reflects again the provincial um, registrations in terms of uh, employment opportunities. On slide 42, there's a reflection on the number of work seekers provided with employment counseling. And again, it is based on the resources that we have on the ground. Slide 43 talks about the number of registered employment opportunities filled with registered work seekers. And here is an indication of what we expect every province to deliver in terms of placing work seekers. You will see that we expect, for example, in Northern Cape, 3,358 work seekers to be placed. Uh, in Northwest, 3,763. And so forth till we reach the target of 55,000 in this financial year. The biggest key risk for public employment services is the insufficient placement of registered work seekers in registered job opportunities. And um, the mitigations, the risk mitigations, uh, again, are reflected to the right on this slide. Program four, labor policy and industrial relations. The purpose is to facilitate the establishment of an equitable and sound labor relations environment to support institutions that promote social dialogue, to promote South Africa's interests in international labor matters, and to conduct, re conduct research, analysis, and evaluation of labor policy and provide statistical data on the labor market. This program has got a budget allocation of 1.2 billion rand. And members will recall that this is the program where the bulk of the money goes to transfers to the CCMA, as well as to NETLAC, a substantial amount of the budget. In fact, I think by far the biggest amount of the budget goes to, 
to those two entities. So here we are reflecting on the amendments of the employment equity regulations, which we would like to, um, to publish by the end of March next year. We would also want to publish the annual employment equity report and the public register by June of this year at the end of quarter one, as well as, <coughs> excuse me, the annual employment equity report and public register to be published by 31 March of next year. The income differential tool has already been developed and we will not have a target for this financial year. The uh, national minimum wage 3.1, the review, you will see that there are small changes in terms of the indicator, the rate is uh, our changes and approved by the Minister of Employment and Labor. This is the minimum wage reviewed, and this is normally the uh, investigation to be published by November, and then the new minimum wage to be published by the 31st of March. 4.1 is the percentage of collective agreements assessed and verified by 31 March, and here 100% of collective agreements where parties are not representative are assessed and verified within 120 working days of receipt. Further, in terms of LP and IR, is our percentage of collective agreements where parties are representative will be done within 60 days. And then labor organizations applications for registration will be approved or refused within 90 working days of receipt. Uh, of the competent application. On slide 49, the progress reports, this is on our bilateral cooperation, multilateral obligations. These reports will be submitted to the minister annually to make sure that we report ample, amply on, on our obligations and our actions that we take. Chairperson, uh, LP and IR continues on slide 50. Here we have the labor market bulletins to be produced and the job opportunities and unemployment in South African labor market to be produced. You uh, will recall that I think it was on the previous occasion we spoke about the matter of us cooperating with Statistics South Africa. And again, here the annual industrial action report, we use the information of the administrative statistics and cooperate with Stat South Africa to, to produce these reports. Then we would also like to do four research reports, and I know that the branch is busy at the moment identifying these research reports that they would want us or would want to finalize in this financial year. So key risks for this program is uh, insufficient labor market research conducted in terms of monitoring the impact of legislation. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, this is one of the key risks that we see might have an influence on, on the work delivered. Chairperson, I would like to move over to supported employment enterprises, the strategic plan, and uh, briefly look at that, as well as the annual performance plan for SEE. Firstly, is to provide additional job opportunities for people with uh, disabilities. I think we saw earlier, sorry, no, we'll see later on as well, that we will try to place 25 additional persons in, with disabilities employed in the factories so that we come to the 1,000 that I alluded to in the MTSF together with the other uh, entities or the other organizations that are funded by the department in terms of subsidize, subsidizing people with disabilities in the labor market. We would want M SEE on slide 53, to generate at least 61 million South African rands and receive 141 million in transfer funding so that we can uh, get this entity to be financially viable and to sustain their growth. Members will recall that we've been battling with this entity in terms of its, its financial viability for quite some time. And there is a target of an increase for this particular year of 10% in the annual increase of sales revenue from goods and services by the end of March of, of, of 2023. On slide 54, 
Here also, SEE would want to enter into customers' agreements, which make them sole providers for these customers. And by the end of 2023, so by March 2023, that is seven customer agreements would have been entered into to make sure that they become a service provider of choice for these particular um, customers. Slide 54 here is just a table of what I have explained already in terms of the previous slides. 50 additional people with disability to be employed, a 10% annual increase in sales revenue, and then seven customer agreements entered into by the end of 2023. We also have that they have uh, see that uh, SEE has got risks that they have identified. And uh, the key st strategic risk for them is the inability to generate work opportunities for people with disabilities. And then the risk mitigation and so forth is explained. Chairperson, with your approval, the next slide from slide 57 onwards uh, are, are the financial slides. And if it if it is acceptable to you, I will allow the CFO to take us through these slides. Jay, yes. thank you. Yeah. So, thank you. Thank you, Jay. Uh, good evening, honourable members. For the, the slide depicts the allocation for the next uh, well for this financial well for the for, for this financial year and the two outer years giving us over the three years the 11.7 million for 22 23 for the app that has just been uh, presented administration uh, is allocated to just about 1 billion 1 billion ies uh, inspection and enforcement services 657 million public employment services 935 million labor policy and industrial relations uh, 1.3 billion in total for 20 uh, for 2022-23 the allocation is 3.9 billion for 20 uh, for 2023 24 uh, sorry for the for, for the yeah, time. Won't be won't be here by twenty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, chair, for the time for the 23, 24. The total allocation uh, is nice three point nine eight three billion. Just as just a small increase from the 2022-23, and for the 24, 25, the total for the allocation is going to be three point seven billion giving the total allocation of 11.7 billion over the MDF period. Next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, he's on the next slide. The current payments uh, over the, 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 the same MDF period, uh, um, uh, compensation of employees, 1.4, uh, for 2022-23, 1.3 billion for 23-24, which clearly indicate that the department has to shed some few or has to abolish some few jobs, well, uh, has to abolish some, well, some few jobs, uh, some, some few jobs, yes, for, for that year. Uh, and also for the 24-25, the allocation increases to 1.44 billion, giving the total over the MTF to 4.25 billion rands. Goods and services, 716 for 22-23, 718 for 23-24, 750 million for 24-25, giving the total of 2.186 billion over the MTF period. So the total uh, for current payments for 23-23 is 2.147 billion. For 23-24, 2.097 billion. For 24-25, uh, 
I think there is a typo there, uh, Honorable Chair. It, there's the slide that I think yeah, we, did, we couldn't correct. Well, we did not, it was not corrected. It can't be 50 million. We just have to go and rectify it. Obviously, I think even the total there is not going to be correct. Uh, next slide. Transfers and subsidies. Over, over the MTF period, CCMA will receive in the 22-23 1 billion, uh, 1.046 billion. For 23-24, it's 1.051 billion rents. For 24-25, it's 1.097 billion. Over the MTF period, they will receive 3.195. Uh, billion rents for the new allocation that has been given to the department on the level for the current year and the next financial year. The government te technical advisory center pathway management network for 22 23, we've been allocated three, 304 million rents, uh, and for 22 for 23 24, we've been allocated 370. 2 million rents, giving the total over the MTF period, which is just about the two years, not the, 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 the outer, the, the third outer, the second outer year, we've been given 677 million rents. NetLEC will receive in the 22-23, 58.8 million for 23-24, 59.1 million for 24-25, 61.7 million, giving the total over the MTF period of 179 million rents. Productivity SA will receive 61.1 million in the 22-23 financial year. For 23-24, they will receive 62.9 million. For 24-25, they will receive 65.7 million, giving the total over the MTF period of 119.3 million rents. Supported employment enterprises. For 22-23, they, they, they have been allocated 166.4 million. For 23-24, 167.1 million rents. And for 24-25, 174.6 million over the MTF period will amount to 508.3 million rents. For the total allocation for the 22 on the transfers and subsidies, for 22-23 is 1.638 million of billion. For 23-24, 1.72 billion rents. And for 24-25, 101.399 billion rents. The total over the MTP, MTF period is 4.775 billion rents. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, DG, any emphasis, points of emphasis? Uh, before we ask uh, members to ask questions. Thank you very much. Uh, just on the, on the GTEC pathway management network, um, you remember that we indicated, I think in the last financial year to the committee that part of the Presidential um, Employment uh, Initiative is to make sure that uh, young people have access to all the, the networks that exist in the country. In the presentation, uh, there was a reflection of the, uh, the registration of work seekers. Now, um, the problem with the current setup that we had before we established the pathway management network was that and a work seeker would only have access to the job opportunities that are sitting on the employment services system of the department. With a pathway management network, we're opening up all the, all the networks that exist in the country, whether uh, public or private, so that if you're sitting in the uh, employment services system um, network, you have access throughout, the, uh, throughout all the, 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 the networks that have job opportunities um, 
in the country and vice versa. So if you're sitting in the Harambe uh, network um, or, or Youth Mobi network, you can access whatever it's sitting on the on the employment services uh, system. Hence, this allocation um, for the for for 2022 and up to 2023. Check. Hence, I just wanted to emphasize that point. Uh, and also, um, just for committee members to note um, the allocation for the CCMA, because this has been a contentious matter um, that that continues to be raised. Um, that CCMA has not been given enough money. And I just want the committee members to note the increase in the allocation of the, of, of the CCMA for, um, uh, throughout the MTF. Thanks, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, uh, DG. Uh, honorable members, uh, it's time for you to uh, ask questions. Can I have hands? Honorable Tengosi, you are welcome. Uh, and also the Deputy Minister is welcome. Uh, Honorable Apleni, Honorable Muimang, Honorable Boshoff, in that order, please. Honorable Apleni. Thanks, uh, Chair. Thanks uh, very much. Uh... Uh, my apologies for the video, Chair. Uh, no you problem. know, we just think of villages, yes. Uh, now, Chair, the, 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 the first uh, uh, question that I would like to ask, uh, it concerns the issue of uh, uh, the decent work uh, I had there uh, when, the, uh, the, when uh, the lady was making the presentation there. She spoke of uh, trying to put emphasis on the question of decent work. I'm a bit concerned. That is why I'm asking that because in most cases we see a situation where so many workers are being exploited, especially in the farms, uh, in the uh, shops owned by mostly the foreign nationals and all of that. Uh, so if we speak of decent work, uh, you know, uh, people who are doing work like cleaning, working in farms, in most cases, they are regarded as people who are not doing uh, the decent work and they are treated uh, in a very bad manner. So uh, I think that takes me to my second question in the issue of inspection. Uh, because you would find that most of these uh, things happen because majority of the people who are called inspectors uh, would prefer having so much relations with the employers. Uh, in most cases, they would even it would even be hard for them to speak with the workers. The workers would only see them coming in and going out, not even knowing what they were there to do. Uh, they would know that there were inspectors here, no inspection was done, and nothing. Uh, they had not even spoke with the workers. So I hope that the department would look at those issues. It happens a lot, especially around Eastern Cape. Those of us uh, who are sitting in the labor desk in our organization, we meet such cases every day. So it would be much better if the department would try to have uh, some teeth to bite uh, in, in, in most cases. But uh, also there is this thing of uh, uh, people with disabilities, uh, visas, uh, balancing the question of race. Uh, in most cases, uh, you know, Chairperson, we've been speaking about this thing for the past 25 years. Uh, it can't be that every time uh, it comes up, you know, the, the numbers do not balance, you're not meeting the targets. Uh, it, I think it's high time that some things are, are being enforced. Uh, People, those of us who have disabilities, understand the pain that uh, so many people with disabilities are going through when you are being treated as if you have a leprosy, you know, you can't do anything. A disability is just a disability. It does not mean that you do not have a capacity to do something. So it is high time that the question of people with disabilities is being pushed very hard. Uh, the question of meeting, uh, you know, 
demographics. We need to speak of balancing the numbers. It can't be that in so many companies we have white people being managers and stuff, even those who do not have qualifications. But when it comes to black people, majority of them just become general workers. So the department, it's high time that it 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 it, it have kids, it 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 bites. We need to make sure that uh, we 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 push very hard to try and balance some of these things. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Honorable Aplini. Honorable Moiman. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Chair. Uh, let me start by welcoming the the the, the presentation. Uh, indeed, it put us in a much more better position to understand the, <clears throat> the, the key drivers that, uh, that the department will be zooming into for this financial year in terms of uh, <clears throat> its key the major priorities. The, 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 first, the first one uh, relates to <clears throat> just progress in terms of the, <clears throat> the latest uh, uh, court case uh, that uh, ruled uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, a provision in Quida that uh, did not apply to the domestic workers uh, in terms of the ability to play. <clears throat> So I, 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 I would want to get a sense in terms of uh, <clears throat> uh, given the the, res, the, the retros, retrospectivity yeah, of the judgment in terms of uh, <clears throat> the applicability. I mean the applicability of uh, <clears throat> of 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 of, 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 of to to the domestic domestic workers since 1994. Uh, if the department can give us uh, <clears throat> if that's a case in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the load the uh, the number that uh, is coming through uh, that definitely will uh, display the level of uh, of 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 of, uh, <clears throat> of 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 backlog uh, around the application of that uh, case to the domestic workers <clears throat> Uh, the, the, sec the second one relates to in, in program one uh, uh, the the uh, a department uh, made reference to the need to to deal with the the aging ICT infrastructure uh, which to a certain extent uh, was exacerbated by the by the COVID-19, yeah. <clears throat> uh, it would be important to get a sense in terms of uh, <clears throat> just uh, uh, the timelines in terms of ensuring that uh, uh, we deal with uh, the, the ICD infrastructure because uh, in certain instances, we'll find that even some of the tools that we use are obsolete and therefore making it uh, a difficult for for the for the for the department to to be able to to, to be agile in terms of uh, uh, knowledge management uh, uh, information system, uh, so I'll be, I, 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 it will be important for me just to get a sense in terms of uh, uh, what are the timelines in terms of ensuring that this matter is is uh, is attended to. Of course, there was reference to. The uh, improvement in terms of the cyber security, but I think it's an area that that, 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 that is quite important. <clears throat> the the <clears throat> the other uh, 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 matter she relates to to I think it's program four. Uh, <clears throat> there are issues around the reports that are going to be produced, uh, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> whether it, it is in terms of. Uh, in terms of uh, the the uh, the target set, but what is what is outstanding uh, is the is the impact thereof. Uh, maybe just the check and just allow me to to uh, uh, make a, 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 
a reference. I think it is on uh, on uh, on uh, on uh, on program uh, program uh, <coughs> four. Uh, the question that I want to ask is: uh, uh, What are the what is the market intelligence that will be uh, deduced from uh, this research research reports produced by the Labour Policy and Industrial Resources Program? particularly on the identification of policy impediment, which negatively reduces the potential of small business from creating more decent jobs for the people. The second one is the department can share with, with us some of the important statistical information coming out from the produced research report in terms of the root causes that contribute to limited success in respect of enforcing labor legislation and also let large sharp performance on labor market transformation. The last one, Chair, will be what are the lessons that uh, as a country we can draw from participating in the bilateral and multilateral obligations with international trade and economic blocks, as well as labor organization, uh, but we are taking into account that we are hosting the ILO this coming week. Thank you, Chair. Thank you so much, Chair. Honorable Moima. Honorable Bosho. Thank you very much, Honourable Chair, and good evening to everybody. Um, if I may, I'd like to start with the decentralisation of the UIF to provinces and labour centres and visiting centres and Tusanongs and so forth across the country. Can we be given an exposition of the outcome with regard to the finalisation or the speeding up of claims? Um, for, exa for example, how long does it take um, how many days does it take? And then these visiting centers that they speak of that are in the most rural areas, if they could just give us an indication of where in the rural areas and what times or which days do they go to these places. Um, then I'd like to know, are there still outstanding TERS applications? And if so, what is the value of these claims? And what is the reason that these claims have still not been paid out? And could we have a report on fraudulent claims and um, that have been detected and what the monetary um, value is of these um, claims? And then I'd also like to know the amount that the UIF receives from, if I can call it memberships, with uh, in comparison with that that is paid out per month. And then um, the department speaks of reducing unemployment, but if you have a look at Stats South Africa, we just see unemployment growing and growing and growing. I'd like to know if they can give us a report on their structural reforms and interventions that are in place because Mrs. Bronco spoke about creating around about a million jobs. Um, that equates to about 20 to 24 percent by 2024. Um, if they can just give us a report on how they plan on creating these jobs and what the department is also doing to attract business confidence. And then um, the we have seen in the past many repeat claimants and claims being put in by deceased people. Do we have a, does the department have a detection mechanism in place with regard to that? Um, inspect IESs, um, phew, their targets seem a bit broad to me. If you were to break it down per quarter, per inspector, per province, are they able to give us a report on that then on a quarterly basis? And then I'd like to know what happens if these inspection targets are not reached. And then um, Honorable Apleni touched on people with disabilities and I also have a, a soft section in my heart for them having worked with people with disabilities for 15 years. I'd like to know, is there an SEE in every single province? And if not, is the department planning on establishing such a entity, an entity in each of these provinces? 
so that we can um, show the people with disabilities that we really care about them. And then they spoke of the seven customer agreements that were going to be entered into and finalized by 2023. 2023 is um, upon us, and I'd like to know how many agreements have been entered into by now with the SEEs and um, finalized. And then with regard to the CFO's um, report on the shedding of jobs by 2023-2024, can we be given some information um, whether discussions have already taken place so that we know in which sections of the department these job sheddings will take place because we have to look at exit interviews and stuff like that. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Honorable Kosha. Honorable Tango. Thank you very much, Chairperson. <coughs> Chairperson. The president in the State of the Nation address spoke about the issue of social compacts. Now, if we're looking at the big picture, not the small picture, social compacts are going to be the order of the day. Is there enough budget for, for the facilitation of such social compacts, the, uh, both the existing social compacts and new social compacts that will have to come into being? Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Dango. Are uh, there any other hands? Okay, uh, if I can, I may also take a bite. Uh, um, just questions uh, on the, uh, first on the priorities. Um, I, I just want to check that uh, perhaps under economic transformation, uh, my, my view is that uh, this is not uh, in, the, in the APP. My view is that first it should also be in the APP but also it should uh, form part of uh, uh, priority number two, uh, economic transformation, uh, because it falls under economic uh, transformation, the issue of a 30-day uh, payment period. Uh, um, I know sometimes uh, the department, departments will say it's a normal thing, so they don't even have to have a target on it. It's something that is taking place. Uh, we don't want to take it for granted. Uh, there was a department we complemented, uh, but then the DG of the department saying, uh, why is he appreciated uh, the compliment, uh, but uh, he wanted to tell the truth that they, they are not meeting. Uh, they have not met uh, the 30 day period. Um, so that's why we would like to see it as, as, as uh, part of the targets uh, that uh, should be achieved. Uh, but further than that, it would be good if we uh, were to have it uh, uh, as one of the and our, uh, the, the the priorities, particularly uh, priority number two, economic transformation. So that we also have a baseline. Uh, as I see, yeah, with regard to the priorities, we have baseline. Though, uh, though we don't have such uh, under the APPs. Um, the other issue also that I think should uh, uh, be under uh, economic transformation, uh, but also on the APP under program one is the issue of, because this is also, sometimes because we deal with the uh, other departments as well, not uh, just the Department of Employment and Labor. We also look at uh, best, best practices uh, there will be departments, for example, on, on procurement, uh, in line with uh, what the president said uh, uh, on the 9th of August, I think in 2018, uh, uh, that 40% uh, uh, of the procurement will be allocated to women. Uh, some departments are, are, are sticking to that as a target, uh, but others, uh, they are just under that uh, uh, 40 percent uh, that was announced by the president but would like to see it whether it's a uh, 25 or 30 or 40 uh, or, though ideally would uh, like to you know <laughs> to uh, that department should have 40 so that they don't, they are not in defiance of uh, what the president then said but not to see it at all it, it's a problem 
So we want to suggest that uh, uh, that should be included. Uh, one in the priorities as one of the uh, priority uh, on economic transformation, but two under administration um, as uh, part of program one. Then on, on, on priority number six, uh, social cohesion, uh, it talks about uh, the employment equity and the targets around the issue of uh, Africans and uh, people with disabilities. Uh, but there's nothing about women. Uh, so under that social cohesion, there, there should be something about women in terms of target and the baseline. Because when you go to the APP, all of a sudden you, you, you have an outcome indicator of uh, gender responsive uh, recruitment uh, with a target of 45%. Um, because some of these uh, APP and the indicators flow from the priorities, but you don't find this one on the priorities, you find it in the, in, in, in the APP. Uh, so, so, so there should be that alignment between what is in the APP together with the priorities. Uh, so in the priorities, because when you talk about employment, you could also refer to, to women, you know, just Africans, and, uh, and the people with disabilities who are specific in terms of uh, 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 women, but they don't uh, feature uh, under the priority. So for me, it should be also under priority number six, which is social uh, uh, cohesion. Uh, but also I would say the department should make example as a lead, should be the lead department as a, a employment and labor department. Uh, because I see it is far behind compared to departments that we may bring. We, as a two committees, uh, we have seven departments. We monitor all these things. I, I think uh, so far, out of the seven departments uh, that we met, I think uh, the Department of Employment and Labor is far behind. If they are currently their target is still uh, 45%. Uh, some are between uh, 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 50 and above uh, with regard to uh, the target, with regard to SM, SMS. Uh, so when you talk about 45%, you're still uh, uh, far behind. It's even worse when it is also uh, MTF uh, uh, target. Uh, <clears throat> but also with regard to procurement, uh, there's no mention of a, a percentage in terms of a procurement that goes to youth and people with disabilities. Uh, some departments would uh, be specific with regard to that issue uh, of the percentage in terms of a procurement that goes to youth and people with disability. You know, if all departments were to do this, uh, as well as the uh, uh, state, uh, uh, state-owned uh, enterprises. I mean, then the SEE would stand a chance uh, of also uh, uh, getting a slice uh, out of uh, the, the percentage uh, that is uh, allocated to people with disabilities. Um, so that's why we always also monitor uh, in departments and entities as to what percentage is uh, allocated uh, in terms of the procurement to people with disability, so that uh, uh, the SEE would also stand a chance of benefiting uh, out of that uh, allocated uh, percentage. I just want to check uh, the whether it, when we talk about uh, the ACP. Even remember, in the last uh, 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 COO, the last uh, 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 annual report that you table uh, last month. Um, there was a, a target that the department couldn't uh, uh, achieve, which was the SA go live, SAP go live, uh, which you could not uh, achieve. I just want to check if is it the same thing as the SAP uh, stroke for a uh, HANA system? Uh, but if it if it's not uh, one, uh, if you can explain this uh, SAS stroke for uh, HANA. A system uh, come easy if it's not the same thing as that uh, SAP go live, but also 
if it's not, why then that SAP caller is not uh, a, a no is no longer a target in, in this uh, app <clears throat> um on on program two um i i, I tend to agree with uh, honorable april sorry a plane <laughs> sorry honorable uh, uh, a plane i think to a certain extent with the honorable uh, uh, Boshoff. I, I wish that to perhaps we could uh, break down uh, the the ies uh, I see the numbers, uh, uh, also provincial numbers, because uh, the, the point that the uh, Honorable uh, Aplin is raising that there could be numbers in terms of visiting, uh, which it will be uh, uh, quantity, uh, but then in terms of quality, uh, whether we, we that there are resolutions to this visit to the co problems of uh, of 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 uh, uh, employees in particular, uh, and therefore it would be good if we were to have targets around the issue of inspection, targets around the issue of enforcement, and also targets around the issue of uh, I don't know whether to call them statutory. Um, you correct me. I don't know whether. Uh, uh, referrals. Uh, I mean, in the meantime, we we'll call them a statutory referrals. Those that uh, when they cannot be resolved in the department, then they refer uh, to uh, uh, statutory processes. If they could be also target with regard to those, because um, they were, there's something that I've given up. Uh, I think at some stage I refer to DDG. Um, uh, uh, when he was acting, uh, when the I think uh, the DG was uh, out of the country, uh, so it was an issue of one of the uh, retail shops in in East London. Uh, up to now, I think it's about uh, four years ago now. The department did visit, but the matter has not yet been resolved. So it could be a state that uh, the inspection was done. But the, the issue is the, what is the outcome uh, in terms of a resolution uh, of the problem uh, that was brought to the attention of the department. So it would be nice then if we can uh, break down. Because we may be happy that there are so many thousands of visits, uh, uh, but uh, in terms of outcome, uh, there's, there's not much. Uh, so it would be better also. I, I, I don't know whether and perhaps in terms of a, operational plan, uh, the department is doing that. Um, I, I would be happy if uh, the department is doing that in terms of uh, uh, the, the, quali the quantity, uh, I mean, the quality. Yeah. But also <clears throat> in terms of uh, the, the, the place, the work seekers, I don't know if uh, the department would be in a position to know as to how the period in which uh, these uh, work seekers are placed, uh, is it one day, two days, three days, three months, a year, or permanent? Uh, I'm not sure if you would be able to, because this also relates to the issue of, we could say that you're creating jobs, and then there, there's also an increase in terms of unemployment. It could be that it's a vicious cycle. Those that are placed in the database and they get placed uh, maybe it's only for one day, and they are back in the in the in the database of the department. Uh, so if you, uh, they could be monitoring as well, of uh, those that are those work seekers uh, uh, that are placed, uh, for how long are they placed uh, uh, in those uh, work uh, opportunities? Uh, with regard to the the issue of the the budget. I, I just check on the transfers and subsidies, uh, uh, CFO, if you can clarify for me. On transfers, there's a slide that says it's a uh, 1.7 uh, billion. And, uh, but when you go to the breakdown, the breakdown total 1.6. Uh, if you can clarify that, uh, uh, for me, because I, I got confused there. Um, B, I 
I'm, I'm also concerned, in fact, shocked by this one of uh, the drop in compensation of employees. Uh, the CFO was talking about abolition. I don't know whether it's any, another term for retrenchment. Uh, can we be clarify whether there's going to be a retrenchment uh, in the department in 2023? Because if you look at the um, compensation of employees, uh, in 2022, then it drops in 2023. And the, uh, the CFO was talking about the abolishment uh, of jobs, uh, which means uh, uh, it's a retrenchment. Uh, for me, it's a shock. Uh, I don't know whether I take it for granted that there should not be a retrenchment uh, in the public service. Instead, we need more uh, employees. So I won't go to the, that level uh, of uh, even saying that uh, whether there has been any negotiation. For me, uh, there should be no retirement at all, uh, especially in the public service. Um, and then on SEE, I know in last report, uh, annual report was talking about the environment of uh, 25 million uh, that went to salaries and benefits. Uh, are we foreseeing such a situation uh, in this uh, APP uh, where there will be a environment uh, for salaries uh, and benefits for uh, SEE? Um, yeah, those are the questions uh, uh, from me. Thanks very much. Back to you, uh, DG. Sure, thank you very much. Let me start with the, your, your questions. Um, with the S SCE that we, they via 25 million to salaries in the previous financial year, um, whether they are likely to do that in, the, in, the, in, the, in this financial year. We, we don't know if they are likely to do that. Um, the reason why, they did that last time was that they, um, their sales did not, um, uh, they, they did not sell as much as they projected that they would sell. And therefore the revenue that they um, projected that they will, they will make um, it did not materialize. So they budgeted um, you know, for more sales and they, they sold less than the, what, they, what they budgeted. And that necessitated that uh, um, a 25 million must be fired from, um, from elsewhere in their budget into, into, into salaries. So we are um, monitoring the performance of this entity um, very, very closely. Um, and that's the reason why the somewhere in their APP, they speak about the contracts um, and, and MO, MOUs that they are signing with, uh, with a number of uh, departments and other entities. That is solely to ensure that there's work that is allocated um, to them. So yes, they've signed quite a number of these, uh, of these agreements. Uh, I've signed them because I am the accounting authority um, of the entity. So <clears throat> we're not sure yet, uh, that's, the, that's the honest answer on that. On the abolishment of jobs and retrenchment, whether we will have, retrench, we'll, we'll, uh, have retrenchments in, in, in the department, um, often the, what you see as, a, as an allocation in the outer year, um, that allocation is often subject to uh, to a, a review. So for now, we're hoping that the the reduction in the in the compensation of employees for that financial year um, will be reviewed because, as you indicated, Chair, um, we would have appointed people. We would have warm bodies working, and if you have an allocation that is less than what. Uh, less than the number of uh, warm bodies that you have, the question is how do you pay those people? Uh, where do you get the money to pay them? But also what it says to us is that if we have vacancies um, in the year before um, the, uh, the 
this allocation kicks in, um, we must begin to prioritize um, and fill only vacancies that um, are of you know, uh, serious, serious uh, priority for the, for the department. And, and, and the rational, rationalization should commence even in this financial year. Um, we have quite a lot of, uh, um, we, as a result of the use of technology, um, we could have redundancies and, and, and where those redundancies have been identified, um, we should be in a position to indicate um, where they are located in the organization. And, and that should be the priority for not feeling in an event that you have a vacancy in that area where you're likely to have redundancies. On the social cohesion, um, for priority number six, uh, nothing about women, uh, women uh, in, in, the, in, the, in our target and, and also in the, include, included that in the baseline. Uh, Chair, um, there are two ways that we look at this thing. One is, is internal, it's an internally focused um, approach. Uh, you mentioned that we're sitting, we, we pro, we're indicating that we want to do 45, want to achieve 45%. So that's an internal um, achievement or internal target that we are setting for ourselves, uh, given the fact that we can't say it's gonna be 50% now because we know very well we're not going to achieve that. We have we have warm bodies that are occupying a number of these positions. So we don't want to mislead the committee and say in the next financial year we will have fifty percent. So what we do though, um, because women constitute, um, I think currently they constitute about 40, 40 to forty six percent, and we progressively every time we have a vacancy at, at SMS level. We're making a conscious effort to appoint a, a, a woman uh, so that we can get, get much closer to the 50%. Um, so in the long run, our target is 50%, uh, Chair. But if, you, if we look at, if we focus externally, the, the number of the inspections that we do in terms of the DG review, and that's where we report um, on social cohesion, all the digital reviews, uh, inspections that we do, they actually unpack um, the, the, the representation of women um, in, at, at a workplace. So the, in, in the presentation, we reflected the, the, the number of inspections that we want to do uh, to make sure that we, we look at the represent, representativity of women, we look at the representativity of men, um, at a at a workplace, so that uh, the women are covered in that uh, in the number of employment employment equity inspections that uh, that that we're going to do. Um, the the CFO will talk to the issue of transfers and subsidies um, on the placed the placement of work seekers. The nature of placement is a temporary, permanent. Uh, Chairperson, the committee will remember that every time we come to the committee to report, um, specifically in this area, we will reflect the nature of the placement. Um, we will indicate whether the placement uh, is temporary, permanent, um, and and whether it's it's a it's a it's a leadership uh, because we also place people in in, in leaderships. So we have information um, and, and we always, when we report to the committee, provide that information. So it is chair um, readily available. Um, I'll follow up on this case of the retail shop in East London. I'll, I think I'll speak to you chair um, offline so that I can get uh, more details on this so you can follow up. Let me just explain chair, um, um, the outcome, how we determine the outcome of an inspection. Um, you were saying that we need to reflect the, the targets in terms of the inspection and the compliance and the, and the, stat, the statutory referrals. We've done that in the, in the presentation that we've, uh, we've uh, that Ms. Bronkost has, has done. We reflected the target on inspection and I think, Chair, you were calling it a visit. 
um, it, it, to us, we are referring, it, referring to it as an inspection. So the outcome of the inspe that inspection is that the inspector will then re reflect whether there, there's compliance um, with all the pieces of legislation or, or not. And if there is no compliance, then the inspector is duty bound to issue um, a compliance notice. Um, and, and then if that compliance notice is not complied with, um, that notice is then referred to statutory services so that they can then refer the matter for, uh, for prosecution um, to the CCMA. Or um, if it's an OHS inspection, it, then the matter will be referred to, uh, to court for, uh, for, for prosecution. So, so that, that is reflected in the reports that, that, we, that we generate, uh, Chairperson. Also what we generate, uh, or part of the reports that we generate is a reflection on the, the different pieces of legislation that we administer. Um, the level of compliance with each piece of legislation per province, and, and we can provide that information also per, per quarter. So that breakdown, uh, Chairperson, um, is there and it can be, it, it can be provided. I, I just want to tie this point with a point raised by um, Honorable Blin, that inspectors, when they go out and do an inspection, um, they prefer to have, a, have good relations with employers. They, they do not speak with unions. Um, we've heard of this, Chair. Um, the, the Inspection and Enforcement Services has a code of good, has a code of practice. Um, oh, sorry, as a code of conduct. Every single inspector um, has to comply with that code of uh, conduct. And, and I always make this appeal that if there are members that know exactly that Inspector X went into this place and they did not speak to the employer employees, we would really want to know those inspectors because those inspectors do not represent who we are as a department. And those inspectors are, would be uh, transgressing the code of, the code of uh, conduct that, um, th that they know and they've been um, trained on that code of conduct. conduct. Um, so they will also, what, what they're doing is against the values of the organization. So we take it very, very seriously um, what uh, Honorable Aplade is saying and, and what you are saying as, <clears throat> as well, Chair, because we really would want to know who those inspectors are so that we can deal with them. Um, and and uh, what their, their behavior actually is, uh, um, is uncalled for and, and it, it puts the name of the department in disrepute. So we would want to, to deal with them decisively. On the issue of SEP, uh, SEP, SEP for HANA, um, and the fact that we missed the go live uh, date last, last year, and in this year we have not included it as a target. Um, the, even though we've missed the, the go live, um, however, we, we, we achieved what we call a technical go live in a sense that uh, um, both inspection and enforcement services and public employment services. Uh, could transact on the system, um, and the reason why they have not go um, they have not go live as 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 as, as expected was the fact that um, we did not finalize the 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 tender uh, for SEP for SEP maintenance and uh, say so yeah for SEP uh, for SEP maintenance. And we just finalized it now. So the delay was from our side. It was not on, from the service provider side. And we've just finalized the, the, the tender now and we'll be busy with the contracting uh, so that we can have a service provider that will uh, assist with, uh, with SEP maintenance. Um, 
previously it was done by SEP themselves and um, and national treasury instructed us to go to go out on tender um, because SEP could not prove that they're the sole provider of this service. And on the basis of that, um, we, we, we went out on tender. So, but the, we are now on track um, to, to make sure that uh, we don't miss the go live um, <clears throat> in, this, in this year. So we did not include it, uh, Chair, I guess, because um, the, the technical go live was achieved and, it, and it's a technical matter. Um, and we, we, in this financial year, in fact, before the end of the financial year, uh, we will we will uh, will uh, meet the goal the goal life, and the um, I think the CFO will deal with the issue of procurement uh, of of women and youth and people with disability. Um, I think I spoke on the issue of social co cohesion, inclusion of procurement, forty percent allocated to women. I think the CFO will also talk on this issue and the the dilemma that we have in terms of this 40% allocated to women. We want to do it, but there are challenges that we're experiencing and the CFO will, will, will dwell into that. The economic transformation not in the APP, the issue of 30 days. What we did, Chair, was to include this in the, in the, in the work plan of uh, our finance uh, and, and, and supply chain uh, unit, which is headed by the, the, the CFO. So on a monthly basis, I get a report on this. So it's not it's something that we've we 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 we've we've putting our fingers on on a on a monthly basis. Um, and if the committee wants a report on this, we can easily provide a report to the committee in terms of how we are faring as an on, as an organization in paying service providers within uh, within thirty days. We thought that because we've been doing it all these years. Um, we must just put it in the work plan of the uh, finance. And on the social compact, um, we, 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 we don't need a, an extra uh, resources for this uh, uh, honorable Dango. We're currently busy with this process um, using the, the current budget that, that, uh, that, that we have. And so far, the indications are that uh, we will finalize the process um, we should be by June finalize the, finalize the process. So um, we are currently engaging with the social partners uh, to make sure that we, we finalize the social compact. So um, the budget is not, a, is, not, is not a challenge in this area. Um, so in terms of the agreements for SEE, how many were finalized? Um, I, I wouldn't have a report now, but I can make this report available to the committee um, because the report is readily available. I think I've dealt with the issue of uh, job shedding in the department due to budget, budgetary constraints. Um, we will make a determination as to where those, those positions are. Um, I think a budget allocation is always um, for for your for your for your financial year that is coming is always a, a useful planning tool um, <clears throat> so that you look at where you are and and that's how we we're taking that reduction um, in the COE uh, for that financial year. Um, is this SE in each province? Um, no. The only province that does not have SCE is Bumalang. And we are planning um, to have, um, to, to open a factory there. Um, the problem is that, uh, as I indicated, the, the, the entity has not been generating enough um, revenue for, for us to be able to carry a new, um, a new workshop. Um, or a new factory um, in, in, in Bumalanga. So that's why we appeal to, every time we appear before uh, members of parliament, we appeal, we appeal to you to uh, use your influence um, to make sure that uh, this entity is, is assisted so that it can get the work that it requires and be able to support 
the uh, people with disability. Um, we, we do provide reports on a quarterly basis in terms of the inspections that we do. Um, what happens when targets are not met? Uh, managers deal with the, the managers that are managing inspectors. They deal with this, these inspectors. Um, um, the consequence management um, is implemented. And, uh, and from at a senior level, um, we also make sure that uh, uh, steps are taken um, to deal with senior managers in terms of not meeting uh, targets. Um, how do we intend to improve um, business confidence? I think as a department, we, we work very, very closely with, um, with other government departments and also with, uh, with employers and organized labor to deal with, um, with issues that continue to um, affect the relationship between government and, 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 and business. And because we're very clear uh, as, as the department and also as government that um, for instance, on the issue of job creation, we need to create an environment for business to, um, to be able to create uh, jobs. And we need business, um, we need to work hard so that we improve business confidence. And, and that's the work that we're currently doing now, also to review the labor market policies that, uh, that we have as announced by the president. Um, that's to provide a policy certainty and also um, to make sure that uh, uh, business confidence is also um, improves. Um, a report on structural reforms, um, how we're planning to, to create jobs. Um, the Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, you remember that uh, part of the reason why the President wants us to have social compact, because it's not just social compact, it's, so, it's specific, it's social compact, um, to deal with the issue of unemployment and also to deal with the issue of poverty. And you'll also remember that um, we have the economic recovery and economic recovery uh, plan um, that, that, that the social partners and government agreed on um, to advance um, economic recovery. And all of us are working hard to make sure that we implement the commitments that we all made in making sure that that plan is, uh, is, 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 um, is implemented and jobs are created. Secondly, uh, President has made available um, more than 11 billion uh, to support public employment uh, services. Um, those, are, those are, of course, jobs that um, are not sustainable in, in their nature, but those are um, initiatives that help to induce um, jobs and in the areas where there are no jobs, and also to keep young people engaged, um, you know, um, through the job opportunities that the programs uh, provide or offer. So, so, so those are the two ways in which we we we're hoping to create jobs. And I also explained the issue of the pathway management network that provides access to young people across the networks uh, that exist in in the country, so that. Whenever there's an opportunity in each in, in one of the networks, um, the young people are able to access it. Um, the the honourable portion of on the data that you want us to provide now on outstanding uh, test claims and fraudulent claims, I will not be able to give you that information now, but certainly we do have that information in terms of outstanding tests and uh, claims. Um, we can make that information available uh, to the committee. We will make that information available uh, to the committee. And uh, I think on, on the visiting points and, and how far the visiting points are and, and where, where they are located, again, we can also provide that information um, because we do have it um, um, readily available. Um, this decentralization of UIF and the speeding up of claims and how long does it take to finalize claims? Well, um, we have different categories of uh, claims. If the honorable member uh, refers to the, on, the ordinary benefits, maternity benefits, um, 
we we have um, different timelines um, in terms of the how the claims are are, are finalized. Um, for instance, your 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 normal benefits. Um, it it's it's five weeks um, to finalize those uh, the, the, the the claims. Um, so we have those timelines, and again, we can provide to the to the honourable member or to the committee those those timelines. And on the reports uh, by LP and I are the impact of those reports, uh, or what market intelligence do they produce, especially as it relates to policy development. Um, honourable members, you'll remember that uh, one of the important um, the reports that we generate as a department is your 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 industrial action report. So that report tells us exactly how um, the labor market players behave in term, uh, in this case uh, employers and organized labor. And and what is it that uh, um, we can do to reduce um, the the, the to reduce um, you know um, instability in, in in the labor market and that's why you see that uh, CCMA would have um, a, a, a program that seeks to um, prevent disputes before they before they okay and part of the intelligence they use is this information that we generate as a department and secondly uh, this information helps us to develop um, the evidence-based uh, uh, policies. Um, you would know that, um, and, and Masha re reflected on this, that part of the administrative data that we generate as a department forms part of the information that states SA used um, to generate the quarterly labor force survey. Um, not all of it, but some of it um, is very useful. Um, <clears throat> for them to generate the, the kind of um, um, uh, information that, uh, that is required for a quarterly labor force survey. Yes, the aging ICT infrastructure timelines in terms of providing new infrastructure. Um, we, we may not have given you the timelines, uh, but certainly, Chair, we can provide that information. Um, because I think what we did was to just focus on the issues that are in the APP, um, uh, but we do have plans in place to deal with the, the refreshing of our um, infrastructure, uh, and we, we will then provide that information. Uh, on COID, uh, the domestic workers, of course, the, um, the court case um, I mean, the judge ruled in favor of the, um, the domestic workers, and it was not. We, we were not contesting uh, because we also felt that domestic workers should have been included in the in the Coit Act, and they should uh, enjoy the same coverage. And we also agreed on the issue of retrospectivity um, of the coverage. And as a result of that, we have set the, the compensation fund set money aside to deal with all the claims. Um, that are related to, uh, to 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 this to this part of the work. I, I don't have the data in front of me now to say how many claims, um, but we can certainly ask the compensation fund to make this information um, available. Um, I think I'll, I'll ask Mr. Mkali to talk to the issue of um, the employment equity and uh, people with disability. Because there's a lot of work that we're doing and. Um, um, I think in the report there's also a reflection of the um, the amended amendments to the employment equity and and exactly what is it that we intend to do. I think I'll give uh, Mr. Mkali to just reflect on that. Um, I think I've spoken to the issue of uh, inspectors that prefer to have good relations. Um, so Mr. Mkali, uh, Mr. Maduna, uh, on the areas of um, uh, finance and, and, and procurement. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Tichi. Uh, can we have uh, additional information? Maybe let's start with the CFO. Thanks, sir. 
I think the the DG has covered the 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 the, the lower uh, outer indicative allocation for twenty for twenty three twenty four, and the option of abolishing funded post. I think I won't cover that part. The on the uh, transfers on the slide of the transfers one point seven chair. Can I just maybe go back and recheck the, the, the figures? I think there seems to be something not correct there. Okay. Uh, then the issue of the pro procurement to, to youth and people with disability, and also the, 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 the indicator there not being included. We have been engaging with the affected department on this particular one. The challenge that uh, is there, yes, we are we are procuring from, from the companies uh, which are meant to, to, well, which are owned by youth and people with disability, but that we discover by mistake after the fact. In engaging, engaging with, the, with, with the affected department, I did point out even at the CFO forum, that I think the processes need to be improved, starting from the C supplier database for those companies to be coded so that when we procure is a directive, is a direct, uh, is something that we can direct right up front rather than at the end to come and check what have, whom I have, have I procured? Because right at the beginning, I can't, on the ABC company, I don't know whether it's owned by youth or it's owned by people with disability. But after a while, when I'm doing my research, I can uncover, by the way, that company was indeed uh, a company that was owned by youth and or people with disability. So there's that technicality that still needs to be sorted out that we have re re pointed out from the, from the CFOs to say, look, can we also be assisted apart from the legality of it, but even from the supplier database to know which are those companies so that we can direct right from the onset to say this, well, look, these are the companies that are owned by youth and people with disabilities so that we can direct the, the spending thereof. There's the challenge that we are still uh, trying to sort out together with the, the affective department and the treasury uh, uh, chief procurement officer. I think for me, those were the, 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 the three issues, Chair. I think the other one was, uh, the first one was covered by the DG, thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm not sure, uh, DG, who else uh, need to make uh, additional, give us additional uh, information? Mkhalifi. Mkhalifi, I don't know if he's on the platform he was, um, but if he's not, um, I can I can now talk to, to the issue, Chair. Um, the, I hope the, you're not confusing that. The, there's also Temi Ngozi here, which is, uh, who is uh, Temi Ngozi applying. No, no, no. I'm talking about Tim because he, Kali, he was on the platform. I don't know if you're uh, confusing it with the okay. oh, or, uh, He was on the platform. Okay, you uh, can. But, uh, but uh, okay. on the issue of um, that the department must bite when it comes to, to transformation, um, I think honorable members would remember that um, recently um, we took um, a company called Huawei um, to court because they did not uh, comply with the employment equity and the plan that they provided to the department um, and the report that they subsequently <clears throat> submitted indicated that they're not complying. So we took them to court and um, they asked us to settle the matter out of court and we settled the matter out of court. And we of the view that what we've got from them from the, uh, as, a, as an agreement was actually a very um, useful agreement um, that we, we signed with them where they were indicating that um, they will transform. And, and, and uh, besides that, they will also um, provide uh, young people um, with, with training, um, especially uh, you know, uh, graduates, uh, they will provide them with IT uh, training and they will absorb some of them. Um, and uh, by a certain given time, they will make sure that uh, um, the, 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 
those that are employed or the company reflects the demographics um, of, of the country. Um, so we do buy it. Um, I'm just trying to illustrate the point that we do buy it. And um, we are now taking a number of uh, uh, big banks uh, to court because they are not complying with employment equity. Um, so we are leveraging the the little resources that we that, that that we have to make sure that we make a statement. Um, we take those that are uh, those big companies to task. Um, in, if we do that, we're sending a message to even the smaller ones that uh, uh, non-compliance with employment equity is not going to be tolerated. But on the amendments that we're making, we're also making provision for the minister to. Firstly, um, we want uh, Section 53 to be promulgated. Um, section 53 is a, it makes is a section that um, gives government powers to deal with companies that don't want to transform um, by refusing to do business with those companies. And we, <clears throat> we're happy that uh, that provision is there and we wait, we're eagerly waiting the, the the promulgation uh, or this, the signing of that uh, uh, bill into, into law. But the most important provision that we're making in that bill is the, is the, is the provision that it gives ministers powers to set sectoral um, targets, um, which is something that is not in the, in the current uh, uh, legislation. So once that is promulgated, we think that it will go a long way in, 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 in improving uh, transformation and ensuring that there is a general compliance with the with, with employment equity. Um, I think that I think that's that's the only way I can deal with the issue that was raised by uh, Honourable Apleni. Um, as, as it also, I mean, the issue of people with disability um, is part of the general non-compliance that I'm referring to, um, and <clears throat> and if we are given the the, the, the legal um, um, powers that I'm talking about that are currently contained in the, the proposed uh, employment equity bill um, will certainly uh, make a huge strides in, in improving compliance in as far as this area is, is, is concerned. Um, so, so I hope that uh, um, honorable members have been able to observe the, the issues that I'm referring to in as far as we are way and others, um, because we tried to publicize this as, as far as we could. Um, but you know, positive stories against government don't sell. Um, and, and there wasn't much noise that uh, the other media, um, you know, the other houses raised. Um, I think the matter was on the SABC, as far as I can, I can remember, and few newspapers. Thanks, Chair. I think we responded to all the questions. Thank you so much, DG, um, for the responses. Um, I just want to check if uh, honorable members have uh, uh, follow-up questions. Um, okay, seems uh, let me just uh, move up. Okay, no. Uh, uh, if I may find out from you, DG, the, the, there are those uh, outstanding uh, uh, questions that you, you promise that you'll be sending the report. Can you perhaps uh, come up with the time frames? So we'll provide the information by this coming Friday. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to to clarify the issue of uh, the issue of inspectorate. Uh, I was referring to the one issue, but it, 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 with regard to the inspectorate, that has been done. Uh, but the issue is at that uh, level of the uh, 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 prosecution, so that's where the delay is with regard to the the retail. Uh, actually, it's, uh, it's it, the shop is called Spa. Uh, but we can talk about it uh, outside this uh, platform, uh, uh, DG. But generally, I'm, I'm happy with uh, the cooperation of uh, the head of uh, uh, the department in the province. Uh, she's really helping a lot. 
Actually, I will share the uh, her number with uh, uh, Honorable Ablin uh, so that uh, whenever he also has a problem, uh, he can conduct uh, her. I'm, I'm very impressed uh, with how with her work ethic. Uh, you know, every time I also have a problem uh, that is brought to our constituency, I will conduct her. Uh, immediately she will respond and uh, send uh, the inspectors and then share the report uh, uh, with uh, our constituency uh, through me. Uh, that's why I'm saying now, uh, it's not a, that is a complaint about uh, the office uh, in the Eastern Cape. I just wanted to clarify that, uh, Tichi. Uh, personal, I'm happy with uh, uh, how uh, we work uh, together with her. So that's why I, I want uh, also to share a number uh, with the uh, with the honourable Ablin. In fact, we've been with the uh, public, uh, uh, I would say, public hearing around the issue of um, the the migration policy. You know that she's been sharing the information, and I was also, I was also sharing it with the relevant uh, people in the uh, WhatsApp group. Uh, I have we uh, work. Uh, uh, very well uh, with, with that office, uh, the provincial office. I just wanted to clarify so that we don't leave this, this meeting uh, with the uh, 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 impression that we're complaining about uh, the, the Eastern Cape uh, province. We work, uh, no, no, I understood, well. Chair. Yeah. I understood, thank yeah. you, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think the, the last issue, uh, Next week, we will be tabling the employment uh, equity uh, bill. Uh, it's not yet uh, been, uh, I see, I heard you talking about the signing, uh, uh, DG. Uh, it has not yet been uh, uh, to the House. Uh, the House will consider it uh, uh, next week on Tuesday on the 17th, uh, together with the, the COIDA, uh, those two bills. Um, I think at this stage, then I would, uh, uh, give back to the uh, minister for uh, his uh, closing remarks. Uh, so, so, sorry, Chair, before that. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, no, there, there, there is something, Chair, that, uh, you know, it has been bothering me for a while now. Uh, uh, the issue of contracts. Uh, unfortunately, here you, you find that it's, uh, it's actually the government... Uh, issue. Uh, you know, we have this thing of uh, the uh, assistant teachers, uh, which I think now they are signing their contract for the fourth time, if not the third time, I'm not sure. Uh, and then according to the Labor Relations Act, I think 1994, section 190. Well, I'm losing you, Honorable Aplin. P. Uh, it states we, we, very we clear that uh, if uh, I'm sorry, Chair. We lost you for some time, but you can continue. All right, Chair. No, I was saying. Yeah, we are losing uh, you again. In terms of the Labor Relations Act, uh, I, think, I think it's a section. Oh, my goodness. Networking is to ask, Chair, is that is the expectation to those uh, that uh, uh, in the long run, they would uh, employ them full time. Uh, I'm asking this because uh, I'm, I'm very concerned that it would be the government who uh, breaks the law in this, in this instance, where the government keeps on renewing these contracts, because it's clear now that maybe there is a need uh, for them to be employed full time. So I, I, I just wanted uh, the, the the views of the of the department on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Honorable Apple. Uh, did you did you get that? Yes, I did. Um, yes. I got that from the beginning, chair. That uh, uh, Honorable Apple was was talking to the the deeming provisions. Um, the the difference here is that um, this is a public employment services program, um, and it has it's it has a duration. And and if you go and look look at the deeming provisions, they are clear that 
um, in instances where there's clear um, there's clear time frame in terms of when the um, the contract will start and when the contract will end, um, then you do not apply the the, the deeming provisions that you would, as you would ordinarily do if the services of these assistant teachers um, were such a nature that um, their contracts did not have a, a specific uh, you know, uh, ending date. So that's the first thing. So the second thing is, um, will they be justified to have an expectation that they will be employed on a full-time basis? Of course, they would be justified because I think it's in the interest of um, all of them uh, to be employed uh, uh, full time. But that's the matter that um, if they so wish, they can go and test um, in, 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 in either the CMA or in the, the, the labor court. But um, this program is no different to the EPWP uh, project program. It's a skills based program. Um, and and the, the, the challenge that we have in South Africa is that we often refer to skills-based program as, as employment. Um, and because people get paid and they regard that as remuneration, um, <clears throat> whereas this takes the form of a stipend. Um, so th that's, that's my view. And I don't know what the minister thinks about it, um, but, but I think, um, the assistant teachers, uh, just like any public employment services program, um, is is governed by um, you know uh, by uh, some you know uh, provisions that are in the contract when the contract starts when the contract um, ends, um, and the fact that it's renewed on a regular basis. Um, it doesn't make it a normal um, employment program. Uh, it, it is a it is a, a public employment program, and uh, and it's bound to come to an end. Um, and it's renewed now because the there's an allocation that has been given to the the Department of uh, of Education as part of the Presidential um, Employment uh, Initiative. So, <clears throat> so that that that's my take, Chair. Um, on, on the assistant teachers met. Thank you very much, uh, DJ, for the explanation. Uh, over to you, uh, Minister. Minister Nessie. No cheating. Is it? Tando, how is it? All right, Chairperson, I'm going to check the minister now. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think maybe we should uh, uh, close uh, the meeting because uh, I see that the minister is uh, logged in, but uh, maybe there are other technical problems. Uh,
Mr. Obawa, any feedback? Uh, the minister is going to come in now just to say a few words. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Minister, we've been waiting for your closing remarks. No, no. My, my, my apologies. Yeah. My colleagues from the other ministry were, were here at the door. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. What I can say, Chairperson uh, and the honorable members, um, the, these are the plans which, which were put in the APPs. And um, the, the 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 strategic plans. We we have noted uh, all your concerns, but I think what is key is to hold us accountable by making sure that you are monitoring what we want to to implement. And you have raised a number of questions, and we think that we will have to follow up on the questions which which you have raised and uh, follow up by first um, giving better explanation or even more explanation or on what we've done in order to correct some of the issues which, which, which we have raised. But we take it that your comments were more of enriching um, our, 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 uh, our plans. They, they are not just to shoot us down. Then it means we will have to take those recommendations uh, positively. And I think that's what we're going to do. That's how I would, I would end this, Chairperson uh, and Honorable Members. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, let me formally uh, thank you, uh, thank the Deputy Minister, uh, DG uh, officials from the department, uh, the Honorable Members, uh, the staff of the committee, and the staff of parliament, uh, particularly from the communication uh, department, who are making sure that uh, the deliberations and the proceedings uh, are also seen by the public uh, in social media as well, and also uh, in the uh, channel uh, of parliament. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we will see the minister uh, tomorrow. Uh, the members of this committee, uh, Minister, uh, also members of uh, the committee that uh, oversight uh, DPSA and its entities. Uh, so tomorrow we hope to see you uh, presenting the APPs of the Department of Public Service and Administration. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see you then tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I, maybe if uh, Honorable uh, Moiman can remind us about time. I don't know if it's the same arrangement as today or tonight. Yes, Shai, it's still uh, tomorrow at 6 in the evening. Oh, okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much, uh, Honorable Members. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, I, I hope, I hope, Chairperson, you have submitted the uh, the required names for the global conference on child labor. Yes, we've done so. We've done so. If, you, if, if you have not registered by a particular date, we will kick you out. It's not a South African conference, it's an international conference. Then it will be the fault of uh, uh, Mr. Mkalepi if we are kicked out because we'll send the names to him. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you thank so you much. much. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Good night. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good night. So ultimately, you've yeah. uh, managed to correct it. Her <laughs> 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 voice. <Good night>. Because... <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So... Good night. Good evening.